Hey everybody, Courtney here with a full length yoga flow that we're gonna call spring cleaning. So do join me in a comfortable seat. Sukhasana, you can grab a throne, anything that helps you to open up your hips, your lower back. And once you arrive, maybe close your eyes, turning your awareness inward. Letting go as much as we can of anything happening outside of our practice. And for now, just watching that rise and that fall of each breath. Staying with the breath, inhale, do shrug the shoulders. Exhale, release them. Eyes can stay closed or a soft focus. And do roughly three or more easy shoulder rolls on your own. And then from here, let's sweep the arms out and up. Pausing when you get to the top. A little stretch through one side, then the other. And once you find your way to neutral, take another inhale, brightening all 10 fingers. Exhale, bring the right hand down to the ground, left arm up and over. At times when I'm facing forward, I will mirror you. In other moments, of course, I will do the right, the left with you. But if there's ever any confusion, and it's that mirroring style. Do gaze down, forward or up, take another breath, just being here. And then let's inhale and rise. Exhale, hands can come down, release, or reach both arms up right away. Take the extra moment, stretching, yawning, waking up those spots that need it. Left fingertips do eventually come to the floor, whichever side you didn't do. Right arm reaching up and over. Do you note your sit bones are staying grounded, the bottom ribs are wrapping forward and up. If looking up feels good, great. If it feels better, gaze forward or down, and if you're not sure, feel free to explore. At least one more breath being here. Gradually taking it all the way back up to neutral. And if you've yet to, exhaling hands will come all the way down. Palms on the knees, sway it out a little right to left. And then do add a few Sufi grinds coming forward. We inhale. Exhaling, take it back. Specifically getting into our digestive system a little bit more. Today, encouraging efficiency, getting everything moving, but not going too far, too fast, backing off when you need to, checking in with your body by scanning, noticing, becoming an observer, becoming your own best teacher. This idea of svediaya, self-study, being brought in again and again. Let's switch the crossing. Do add at least a shoulder roll or two, maybe reverse direction or do one shoulder at a time. And then from there, once you've looped the shoulders back and down, you'll rock again right to left. Right into our Sufi circles, maybe starting the way you didn't on the other side. If you're not sure, no big deal. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Do brighten the toes so they're not getting squished. Letting yourself move a little faster or slower than my cues, allowing that breath to guide you. And if you get to reverse, maybe you do. Perhaps you want to reverse again and again. Closing your eyes or still working with that soft focus, letting go of any rigidity in your face or jaw. With that said, as we slow down the Sufi grinds, bring it back to neutral, flowing a little right, left, forward, back. And maybe choose to weave in the horse breaths where you're exhaling by fluttering out the lips. <clears throat> Inhale through your nose. At least one more. And lick your lips, swallow. 
to cultivate ujjayi pranayam, ocean sounding breaths. Taking that with you, push forward to all fours. From that tabletop position, just rock and sway, wake up the fingers. Take a moment to spin your hands toward your knees, stretching your forearms, the wrists. Maybe you're still rocking, swaying, maybe you want to arch and around with the hands placed either way. Any variation of a cat cow for the next couple of breaths. And taking your time, aligning for plank. Shoulders are over the wrists, fingers still nice and bright. Walk your way in, finding that strong foundation, building your pose from the ground up. Traps back, crown of the head reaches forward. Maybe rock a little forward, back, right, left. If you do need to modify knees, come down, otherwise just staying with the thighs lifted. Take your inhale, and as you exhale, push back, downward facing dog. Soft knees, active quads, little rock sway, maybe right into a calf stretch if you're feeling it. I often need to shake the head, neck, sometimes simultaneously with the other stretches. Creating more mobility, more range of motion, might include turning your hands out ever so slightly. Rounding maybe more easily through the thumb, first finger to get out of the wrists. So we're not heavy in the heel of the hand. And if you get to turn the head and neck, try a slow yes, a slow no. Eventually elongating all four sides of the neck. The head aligning with the inner upper arms. Bring it forward again for plank. Adding a little rock, sway, just a breath, two to move. And maybe another breath or two to be here. From your plank, exhaling, returning to down dog. Taking some time to make it your own, including coming to the knees even here. I will happily demo the Lasana Child's Pose. Knees wide, big toes together. Giving your body a moment to fully rest. You can also take something along the lines of Anahata Asana, the heart opening pose. Also references Puppy Dog. And eventually from that down dog or from all fours, find your plank. Take another inhale or two, feeling that we're working from the feet to the crown. But we're not straining, finding a way to soften somewhere. Shift a little further forward, draw the elbows in and back and do lower all the way down. Stretching the tops of the feet back. Inhale, float the heart forward and through low cobra. Maybe your palms even lift on the first one or two. Exhaling, do release from there. Inhaling, root and rise, float it up. Exhale, melt it down. Feel that the feet are staying grounded, the outer ankles are firming in. Take a couple more and perhaps on the way down, you release to one ear or the other. Another breath, two. Bring yourself back to neutral, little adjustments as needed. And then from here, let's work our way to a bigger cobra or maybe upward facing dog. And wiggle it out, sway it out. Join me in tipping your head one way or the other. Strong arms without jamming the elbows. Maybe add a little shoulder roll quality here. And then do push back. You can use your knees or roll over your feet right away. Downward facing dog. Feet are roughly hip bone distance. Hand shoulder width apart. Give yourself a little more space as needed. We're talking a centimeter or two. Linger for another breath, maybe flutter it out, horse style. <sighs> Coming back to Ujjayi, the ocean sound. Inhale, flow forward, plank pose. Moving through vinyasa, exhale, you lower halfway, or still all of the way is fine. 
Inhale, flowing forward into up dog, shoulders root back, feet round, thighs are lifted. Exhale over your toes, downward facing dog. And you can take a couple of these to build lots of heat, referenced as tapas, part of the spring cleaning idea, purification through sweat, through movement. And also checking in with what is not serving us, letting ourselves release that stuff. Arguably the more important part of spring cleaning. If that means choosing no vinyasa for a minute and maybe resting with me for a few breaths, do. You just need to shed a layer, my sweatshirt for example, or you need to sigh to release in that way, do. We'll bring it back to down dog and we'll walk our hands to our toes. Getting off the hands, the wrists, letting your shoulders have a moment to release. Clasp your elbows, sway it out side to side. Knees are unlocked, but the thighs, the quads are lifted. The traps are not crowding your ears, melt them away onto the back. Switch which hands where. Few more rocks, forward, back, right, left. A couple more sighs if it's effective, relaxing your belly or face, the areas that overwork. <sighs> Drop the arms, bend the knees a lot, roll it up. An inhale or two to rise. An exhale or two, releasing, maybe shoulder rolling, looping them back and down. Palms coming together create Anjali Mudra, this idea of prayer shape. Integrating, uniting all parts of you. Yoga does mean union, honoring that holistic quality, letting yourself feel that connection to the earth itself, grounding through the feet. So many of the different asanas, the yoga poses are inspired from nature, plants, animals, children, etc. From our mountain pose, reaching out and up. Exhaling, bend the elbows, cactus shape. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhaling, hinge the hips, bow forward and down. Inhale, chest forward. Exhale, do fold. Root and rise, stand up, maybe look up. Exhale, hands come down. One more just like that, deep breath in. Cactus, fingers bright, chest broad. Inhale, reach without shrugging, maybe hands stay wide. And exhale, do dive from there. Inhale, chest out, lengthen through the crown of your head. Exhale, fold in, drop the crown, feel what it is to be empty for a moment. Inhale, root down, reach up. And again, as you exhale, notice that quality of clearing the belly. Take that extra breath or two, observing, feeling what it is to be full, feeling what it is to be empty. Adding on, drop the arms, tuck your chin, roll your head and neck up. Preparing for some twists and things to come. In general, just a beautiful way to bring back range of motion where it gets lost, maybe taking the head all the way around, stretching your throat. Helping clear out the Vishuddha chakra, the throat region. Mm, helping you to speak up when you need to. To find your voice. Perhaps you need to linger in one spot or another. A little gentle body work, if that's resonating. Eventually chin back to chest, hands behind your own head and neck. Pressing for just a moment, elbows might move toward each other ever so slightly. Exhaling first, you're going to roll it up, leaning back, inhaling, jump the arch. Passing through neutral on the exhale and tuck the chin toward the chest. Inhaling through neutral and arch the back. Now finding that sense of parallel chin to the earth. Crown of the head lifting to the sky, tailbone toward the ground. And rock and sway, let go of any rigidity as the hands float down. 
If you circle the wrists, give everything a little shake, shim. One more time, inhale, reach it up. Cactus shape from there. Inhale, reach it up. Dive it back down. Inhale, heart forward, thighs back. Walking it out, downward facing dog. On the inhale, hips nice and high, reach back. Look forward, step or jump. Inhale, expand, chest out. Exhale, release, fold in. Root down, stand up, coming back to Tadasana. Exhale, palms to the heart. Anjali Mudra, that prayer shape. Just for a moment, observing. Is the breath a little choppy or shallow? Can you lengthen it without straining? Can you feel what it is to be full? Feel what it is to be empty as a way to regulate your nervous system. And you can connect with a mantra, a phrase. It can be something as simple as I am inhaling, I am exhaling. Accessing prana, life force with each breath in. Clearing out the stagnant stuff. An immediate tool to help us spring clean, if you will, is the exhalation. Inhaling, take the arms out and up. Twisting to the right, open the heart, brighten the fingers. Back arm can circle or both reach, inhale. Twisting left, open the heart, back arm can circle, both reach, inhale. Diving, exhale, take it down. Inhale, we lengthen from the belly to the crown of the head. From there, walk it back, exhaling, take a breath to maybe in your plank, modifying as is helpful or needed. Shift forward and flow, Chitaranda. Inhaling your choice, cobra or up dog, I'm doing the modification first. Exhale, down dog, puppy dog, or a brief child's pose. Shorter stay here as far as the traditional five or six breaths, taking roughly two or three. But if you need a little longer or shorter, it is always your choice, making it your own. High on tippy toes, hips press back. Look forward, end of the exhale, step or float. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands are coming down. Deep breath in, take the arms to the sky. One more time with the standing twist. Open left first this time. Inhale, take your arms to the sky. Exhale, right, or whichever way you didn't. Inhale, take the arms to the sky. Exhale, dive from there. Inhale, heart forward, shoulders back. Stepping with the other foot, or of course, jumping with both, and flow. Inhale in cobra or up dog. Exhale and take it back, downward facing dog. Just those two to three cycles of breath first. Hmm. <sighs> On the inhale, hips press back. Do look forward, step or flow. Inhale, chest out. Exhale, we melt in. Rising on the inhale, stand up. Releasing on the exhale, hands are coming all the way down to your belly, your heart. Manapura chakra being the lower belly region. Anahata chakra referencing the heart center region. Both are bundles of nerves. This idea of the energy centers, the chakras, sometimes referenced in other ways from other practices like nadis, meridians. Switching which hands where, take just a few more breaths. And do observe. Can you ground, can you connect? Letting your sankopa, your intention, come back to focus. Arms will release by your sides. Parallel the feet, roughly hip bone distance, so quite narrow. Big toes can also touch with inner ankles slightly apart if you prefer that classical setup for chair. We're bending the knees, we're circling the arms out and up. Rock and sway for a moment, brighten the toes. Draw the navel in as you're breathing out, letting that lower back have a natural curve 
without exploiting it. Find the difference. Start to lift your right heel, maybe that whole right foot. Take a breath or two. Mm. Tap the foot down. Very slowly changing sides. Lift the left heel, maybe the entire foot. Breath or two. Mm. Both heels come down. Standing it up today, root and rise your back in mountain pose. Soft face, soft jaw, maybe a big sigh or a horse breath. Let it up and out. <sighs> Utkatasana, bend the knees, sit heavy in the heels. From here, root and rise, stand it up, Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhaling Utkatasana, your chair. Exhaling, finding your way back to mountain. So a few more today from here. Breathing in. Breathing out, creating a little more tapas, heat, as well as strength and stability in your legs and core. One more. Now take a moment, observe if things got a little intense, which they can, soften. Returning to chair, but now taking it into Uttanasana, the fold, letting our arms move up toward the sky. And maybe letting out a bigger ha ah, or sigh. If you need to observe the first one, you do. Bend your knees, Utkatasana. Exhaling, ha, ah, Uttanasana. Keep going. Deep breath in, feel that fullness. Complete breath out. Ah. Notice the emptiness. Last three. And stay folded, release the arms. Parallel the feet if that got lost. Maybe let the knees sway, let the head rock, sway. Hmm. Let's interlace fingers at the low back. Grab a strap if you need that and take the arms up and over. Feet can often walk wider here if it feels good. Looking right, bend the left knee, reach a little left. Extend the right leg for another breath or two. Hmm. Passing through neutral when you're ready. Start to look left, bend the right knee, reach right. Eventually back to neutral, drop the head, drop the arms. If you took the feet wider, heel to them to hip width. Hands framing the feet, the outer ankles, inhale chest out. Your choice, step or float, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, push back, downward facing dog. From here, do take the right leg to the sky, down dog split. Several breaths here. So anything, including little circles at the ankle. Starting to roll the hip open, adding some kicks at the knee. Looking right, or of course, flipping it out fully. Coming toward the ball of the right foot, outer edge or sole of the left. Lift the hips, the heart, maybe stretch into the throat, let your shoot out of chakra region. Rooting to rise, can you pass through a side plank? And if the answer is not right now, it's okay. Maybe a breath, feeling what it is to be there. And then we're all coming back to a down dog, climbing your way in. Side out if that's effective for you right now. <sighs> Left leg lift. Take it slow, maybe just waking up the toes, the foot, the ankle. Finding more rotation with kicks, circles, figure eights. I went as far as flipping the dog, Vashisthasana, side plank, also known as wild thing. Feel free to come with me, but don't feel like you have to. Rooting to that bottom hand, the feet, lift the hips, the heart, maybe drop the head. And easing your way from there towards side plank. Lots of breath, finding that action of opening toward the sidewall, and then bringing it all the way back, downward facing dog. Do take a recovery breath or two, come to the knees if you need it. Great moment to circle the wrists, for example, sigh. High on tippy toes, look to hands, step or hop. Inhale, expand, chest out. 
Exhale, release, do fold in. Rising on the inhale, stand it up. Releasing on the exhale, hands come all the way down. Take another deep breath in. Do let it out. <sighs> Inhaling, circle the arms out and up. Exhaling, cactus shape from there. Inhaling, take the arms up. Exhaling, dive it down. Inhaling, chest forward. Yogi's choice, stepping or floating, chaturanga. Inhaling, cobra or urva mukha, up dog. Exhale, do take it back, downward facing dog. So from here, we're gonna take our left leg up first, alternating with what we're leading with. Find that extra moment to release the right heel, maybe lift from the inner left thigh, the left glute. And then exhaling knee toward the nose, nicknamed tiger when you're pouncing forward. All those variations of tiger, inhale, left leg lifts. Next exhale, left knee towards your left tricep. Inhale, sweep the leg up and back. Exhale, crisscross it. Inhaling, sweep the leg up and back. Shifting forward, exhale, step the foot all the way through. So a few breaths coming high on fingertips. A little rock, a little sway, a little circle. You always have that right hand on a block or even both hands for a moment as needed on blocks, using them to your advantage. We're going to bring our left thumb to our left hip, drawing it back and in. Crown of your head reaches forward, the heel presses back, and you eventually revolve from there. The top arm can circle, hoping to stretch and open the rotator cuff region. Maybe take it both ways once or twice. Perhaps you stay here, otherwise starting to climb up, inhale. Variation on twisted crescent, unlock the back knee, exhale, revolve. The chest gets broader with each breath in. Maybe you can twist a little further with each breath out. At some point, consider reaching to the back thigh. Right arm to the sky, gazing down if that's best for the neck. Forward or up if you prefer a little more back bend. Another moment here. An inhale or two, back leg may be getting straighter. I'm joining my right thumb, first finger, Gyan Mudra, standing. And exhale, both hands come down. Straighten out the front leg. Bring your back foot a little closer, pyramid shape. Ebb and flow at least once or twice, lengthening. Getting into that hamstring calf, maybe root into the left heel at some point, turn the toes up. The block could even go under that foot if you're needing a little support, putting it on its short height. And then the second one on its taller height. Last few moments, as in three or so full breaths to be here. Clear something up and out, shedding those layers over time. We're taking ourselves from pyramid into crescent one more time. Bend the front knee. Hop the right foot back. Just the inhale to rise. And as you exhale, release. Now you can step your front foot back, keeping hips low. It's a bit more challenging, of course. Single-legged plank. Flowing through a chitturanga or not. Just holding with me for that moment. Maybe you're taking up dog. Maybe you're taking it all the way back to down dog. And maybe even roll the hip open for another breath. Any extra movement creating that mobility we're looking for. We're all back in neutral. To explore the right side. It can be very different left to right, right to left. So being curious. Trying to extend ahimsa, compassion first to yourself. It gets easier with others when we do. Right leg does lift. On an exhale, tiger, knee to nose. All the variations, and inhale, right leg sweeps up and back. Exhale, you take the knee towards your right tricep. Inhale, take it up and back. 
exhale, crisscross. Inhale, take it up and back. Shifting forward, we step it all the way through. So making sure we're not on a tightrope, you can always grab those blocks to help you ease in to the lunge, to all the variations of crescent. Maybe walking that hand or block snugger to your inner ankle. At some point, right thumb to the right hip, taking it back and in. And we start to roll the chest open from there. Top arm can stay, it can also circle one way then the other. Relatively slow, so it's not momentum, but really building range of motion. Get longer here and eventually consider standing up. Inhale. Soft back knee, exhale, revolve. Inhale, feel the chest expand, arms maybe move a touch wider. Exhale to twist. At some point you can reach to the back thigh, left arm to the sky, Elbow lengthen, sternum lift, changing the gaze if your stability's there. It feels interesting to explore the back bend quality. And perhaps you're in Gyan Mudra, sealing thumb, first finger to help calm and focus. Another inhale or two right at your edge. Exhale, we take it down. Pyramid pose on side two, straightening out the leg without walking. Back foot's coming in. We have it flow at least once or twice with the torso. Maybe by unlocking and re-extending that front knee, front leg. Can you get your hips to square a little more, working the right hip back, left hip forward? Maybe you've already flexed the foot. Maybe you need that reminder to evenly ground. Choose to make things easier in moments. Yes, challenging ourselves, but not suffering unnecessarily. Looking for that balance. That beauty of spring you see around you, bringing that into your internal visualization as is helpful. Forward bends are inherently calming, so inviting that focus. Letting your exhales help you release the rest. Almost there, last couple of breaths. And you will come back to your crescent with that neutral alignment that we were just talking about. Bend the right knee, high on the ball of the back foot. One or two inhales to come up. Make sure you're stable, you're steady. Maybe look up. Exhale, ride it down. Single-legged plank. If you're curious, we sneak it back, chest forward. You can flow, which I will demo this time, or not. Root the feet to rise. And we do take it all the way back. Rebounding here, drag your hips back. Soften the knees, lift high on tippy toes, continuing to reach your sit bones up and again back. Then let both heels come on down without losing that length. Maybe you do that a couple of times. And for a little more synovial fluid in the joints. Getting things moving that way. Again, high on tippy toes, look to your hands. Exhaling, step or hop. Inhale, lengthen halfway. And exhale, do fold. Root rise, stand it up. And exhaling, hands come down. A moment just to shake it out. Mm, sigh it out. Shoulder roll it out. And then we are going to consider using blocks here. I will show ways that they make life, again, maybe a little more helpful, a little easier, I should say. A little pad there as well for anyone newer to approaching certain arm balancing. So you might get there, you might not, but this way we've got the props we need. And even for the standing balance, the blocks are usually important. Getting into another chair variation. Funky chair, standing pigeon. Pick up your right knee. Cross that right ankle on top of the left thigh. Let the inner thigh roll away from you. 
Take an inhale and exhale. Next inhalation, slowly sit your hips back. Let your chest hinge forward. A couple more inhales and exhales to find that edge where your thigh is moving toward parallel with you. Arms are reaching, maybe applying the Yang Mudra for a moment, helping to calm whatever's happening. Brighten both feet, both sets of toes. Hug the navel in as you're breathing out. Let's keep going if you can, reaching toward the earth or of course to the nifty blocks or whatever you can use as blocks. Phone books, big hard cover books could work. Taking those another level lower, there are three sizes, three levels, perhaps all the way down. Now my right foot hooks around my left tricep and maybe I'm just here stretching. Perhaps I'm able to rock to the ball of the left foot. Draw the elbows back, just like in Chaturanga when you lower from plank, hugging the triceps so that you're waking up the backs of the shoulders, and then waking up the core of the pelvic floor a little more. Maybe you can tap that foot, lifting from the base of you, feeling the navel to the spine. A few breaths if you can play. And maybe a few attempts. No need to struggle and overwork, right? We want to make sure that we're still having fun with it. It's playful. Pushing that edge without going too far too fast. A couple of inhales to climb up if you're still with me. And an exhale or two, releasing and shake, shimmy. Adjust your blocks for sight too if that's important. A little tripod with your feet, your blocks. Standing on your right foot, left thigh, left ankle to left thigh, excuse me. And again, we're making sure that we're slowly sitting back into that standing cue. Feeling the basics of chair pose here in funky chair, standing pigeon. Adding some arms, maybe even Gyan Mudra. And perhaps that standing thigh is parallel with the earth, perhaps not quite. Reaching your hips back, heart forward, maybe you graze the blocks. At some point, hooking the left foot around the tricep, that's higher than the elbow, if possible. Taking the blocks to whatever height makes the most sense for you. Or just reaching toward the floor, if possible, staying with the original standing chair, if needed. Rock it forward. Draw the navel in. We'll tap, tap. Chipped around the arms. In many ways, chipped around the core. And then of course we are starting to float and fly into this pigeon variation. We'll inhale once or twice to stand up. Exhale as you release, unwind. Move those blocks so they're off to the side or just out of your way, within reach. Not only shaking the arms, but now the whole body. Preference is shaking the tree. Really lovely way to release stagnant energy. Shed those physical and emotional and energetic layers that need to go. So maybe close your eyes and for a full minute, get into it. You can jump fully, you can just bounce. You can turn. Eyes open or closed, but soft. <sighs> Take a few more deep breaths. <sighs> <sighs> Slowing it down at your own timing. Swaying it out, shoulder rolling it out. <sighs> Let your feet move about the width of the mat. Circle the hips. Couple times one way. And a couple times the other. And then turning the feet out, heels in, Malasana. Then always put our heels on a pillow, a yoga bolster, a couple of firm towels, blankets. So we'll make it easier on tight Achilles and helping life to be just a little less challenging in this moment. Hips rocking back, chest forward. 
You can also sit right onto a block if you firm book stacked. <sighs> Moving through the longevity kriya, let's move up and down on the breath. Roughly five or so. Root and rise, inhaling, do reach up, maybe gaze up. Exhaling, take it down from there. Inhaling, root down, stand up. Exhaling, hands toward your heart. Three more. Oiling up the joints. Integrating that deeper breath. Last time. Walk the right hand right from the arm to the leg, leg to the arm. Roll the chest open left. You can always support your head and neck if it's tender. You could circle the arm, the wrist. You can go toward a partial or full bind. And at this point, you're almost there. Gazing up, forward or down, whatever works. Unwinding, unbinding, side two. Parvita Malasana, the revolved garland pose, the twisted squat, as we often say. Again, starting simply and revolving a little further. Or, of course, considering backing off. Maybe even as far as that partial or full bind. Almost there. Feel unwind, unbind. Hands come down, lift your hips up. Give your head a little shake, yes, shake no. Moving any props that are in your way, out of your way. And from here, we'll roll it up. Step or jump, feet together, Tadasana, mountain. Hmm. Parallel the feet. Lengthen the tail, lift through the sternum, the crown of your head. Feeling yourself in neutral, integrating everything you've done, following those twists. Hmm. Just one more standing balancing pose, Vrikshasana, the tree. In many ways, quite simple but always so much to these various asanas. Pick up the left knee. Hike that foot either to the inner calf or go as high as the inner upper thigh if you can get there. Avoid directly pressing on your knee joint is key. Those toes face straight down. The knee is opening out roughly 45, 55 degrees. Hands can return to Gyan Mudra, helping keep us calm, grounded. Reaching up, maybe looking up. Perhaps you do not releve, you got to gaze toward the sky. Take a few more breaths here. And then slowly releasing, maybe send the heel forward, trying not to lean back. And exhale, we release, little rock and sway, or sometimes just getting still, if that's what's feeling needed. Another breath or two transitioning. Ocean sounding, inhale. And exhale. Switching sides, pick up the knee. Reaching for the ankle. Can you hike it up nice and high toward the inner upper thigh? If not perhaps the upper calf. Firming foot to leg, leg to foot, really a mutual relationship. Adding any seal, any mudra that helps to calm and ground by joining those nerve endings. Energetically stretching upward, maybe looking upward, even adding releve like a dancer might. And if you're losing your balance, can you breathe through it? Can we breathe through the changes of the seasons? The changes that come at times when perhaps we do not feel ready. Bringing it back to the breath again and again. Letting that exhale become the vehicle over and over to help you let go. Top knee comes forward, trying not to lean back. Maybe the heel extends forward as well. 
And if you've yet to let it go, shake and shimmy. Maybe join me in another hip circle or two one way. And then the other. And then getting into some lateral circles, last little bit of standing work for our practice together. And then we're going to change gears a bit. And then take your arms out and up. And the idea is to slowly reach to the right. A little bit of a twist as we dive toward the thigh. Right hand chases left and then kind of passes it on the way. We'll continue another breath or two on way. And then you will reverse perhaps at the top with me or at the bottom. Exhaling, take it the opposite direction. And the arm kind of chases the other and passes it. Mm. A lot like in nature. You'll see the birds and things chasing after one another this time of year for lots of reasons. Coming back to neutral. A breath to step jump again your mountain. Lift the shoulders, open up the heart. One more inhale through the nose. Clear it any way you'd like. Inhale, reach. Last time with cactus. Inhale, reach. And exhale, fold. Inhale, chest forward. Stepping it back one more time, plank. And this time, do lower all the way down. Reach the legs back, stretching the arms back. And start to float the feet, the legs, the shoulder heads up. Locust or Shalabhasana. We're going to reach the arms wide, stimulating the belly by pressing it gently to the earth. Waking up the upper back, the core a little more. Reach forward long. You are superwoman, superman. Take at least one more inhale. Exhale, come down. Now a couple of breaths, adjusting. Wiggle it out, side out. <sighs> You're going to start by reaching forward, maybe a touch wider if you're stiff. Come on up. Fingers bright, toes bright. They're not touching, but they are close. Slice the arms wide, airplane style. Expanding the heart center, the inner arms, the palms. Reaching back, can you fly a little bit more as far as lifting the heart, soaring? Mm, last inhale. And exhale. It's one that doesn't always look like much, but boy, do you feel it. And rock your sway, turning from one side to the other. Hmm. Maybe add some windshield wipers. <sighs> side to side and or crisscross style. And then let's push it all back. Coming to the knees, walk them wide, big toes together. Getting into some hasana, the lion's pose. <sighs> You can always put padding between your calves and thighs if you need that. Take at least a shoulder roll. Walk your fingers forward a touch of the knees. Maybe lick your lips, swallow. Bringing in some hasana pranayam, the full lion drawer. We'll scrunch the face up on the inhale. You'll stick out the tongue and look up as you exhale. As you're ready. Clearing out anything no longer serving you, anything holding you back, two more. <sighs> Last time. <sighs> Walk the hands further forward. Separate the knees, adjust the feet. Sippy grinds, bringing it forward and around. Back and around. Take a couple more one way, and then two, three, four, the other. Soft elbows, soft knees, finding that flow. And then we are going to make our way down to the belly. This one's a big twist, a big shoulder opener, a big chest opener. Can be really wonderful as far as targeting areas that often need it. So once you've arrived on the belly, take the arms wide. Being gentle with yourself, no rush to get in. Forehead settles to the floor, expand the fingertips a little further, take a breath. 
Maybe you want to bounce. Now you're going to hike your left knee up. You're going to have to use the left hand, that left leg to help propel you over, keeping the right shoulder, the right ear grounded. Left foot does come to the floor. Left arm can start to reach up at any time. And for some bodies, even over. Now if you need to keep the hand there at first, I get it. Mm. Going further over the next few breaths is your prerogative. Mm. You can always add a circle of the top hand or wiggle the fingers. You can also just be. Mm. Somewhere around five or six breaths, a full minute. And then you'll unwind, you'll untwist for a breath or two. <sighs> Even it all out. Reaching the fingertips apart, take a moment. Maybe exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Hike that right knee up. Using the right hand, the fingertips of the palm, the right foot, start to propel yourself gracefully over. Tapping the toes, maybe the whole foot. Adjusting your way in, left ear releases, right arm can stretch, it doesn't have to. Bringing in some more movement or just letting yourself be. And take a few more deep breaths. Gravity take over last moments. Unwinding, untwisting, bring it all to neutral. Mm. Chill for another breath. And if by that you need a minute, oh good. Coming back to the knees, separating them wide, like we did four lions pose. But now for child's pose, melting the forehead forward and down. You can always stack your palms or grab a block and place it under the forehead. But do massage that region. Soothing, cleansing breaths. <sighs> Inhale to roll up. Exhale at the top. Grab a bolster blanket if you'd like to come sit. Making sure your lower back feels safe and taken care of. Send the heels forward. Toes reaching up and your thighs rolling down to reach up. And if you need a strap, grab it. We're going to hinge forward again, calming, soothing. Nice stretch for the upper back, the neck when we let the head go. Not overdoing it, however, make sure you have and flow at least once or twice. Feeling free to unlock the knees a little bit, lift through the quads instead of jamming. Maybe use your hands to actually draw your baby toes back. Or that's a lot of what the strap, a t-shirt, a towel, a tie, whatever you've got would do. And take a few more breaths, letting yourself be. Any pointing of the feet, extending with another block, all welcomed as well. Just make sure your lower back agrees. You're not forcing it. We're not unnecessarily suffering, struggling, etc. Putting in this balance of effort and ease. Stiram Sukham Asana. Hmm. Rooting and rising through the ground, through the heels to come up. And exhale. Taking it to Parakonasana. Lots of nicknames, including butterfly. That's the most springy, we'll say. Little mariposa, papillon, all the names. Move the shoulders back in yoga, also known as bound angler, cobbler. Hinging forward, elbows are not on the knees, they're toward the more muscular part of you. Adjusting, scooching, maybe even letting yourself fully melt, kind of pancake like if you can get there. I'm more of a muffin or a cupcake. Do you still release your head, your neck, maybe ebb and flow. Letting go where we can, shedding those layers for a few more exhales. Roll or lengthen, inhale it up. 
like so here. I'm going to take it into double pigeon, crossing the right shin, right leg on top of the left. Essentially stacking the lower legs, making sure that foot is not living in the crevice. Cross it all the way over. Top knee can always rest on a block or get something else a little smaller to bring the bottom foot and the top leg closer so you're not straining. Mine's fine with a little bit of space, but there's been times where it isn't, so do check in. Looping our shoulders, maybe hinging forward, maybe not. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out, letting yourself stay upright if that's enough. If you're close, which I'm not, you can put the block or two there. Mm, five plus breaths in total. Sometimes more like 10 or 15 when we find a sweet spot in the outer glutes and hips that need it. Great time to sigh, horse breaths, signs, roars, all of the above. Except I'm still grounded, let go for another moment here. <sighs> I encourage you to lead with the inhale, lengthening or rolling. Keeping us from getting too dizzy, another exhale or two at the top. <sighs> Unwind slowly. Feel free to give your toes, your ankles a little love. Changing it up as soon as you're ready, but not rushing. Crossing left ankle on top of that right knee. Not in the little crook of the leg, instead of making sure you get that stack. Bottom foot may need to squish forward, sit bones kind of ground back. And then of course, any extra rock, sways, I too can have a whole different story to tell from various hobbies, sports, injuries, etc. Taking your time, melting forward. That might mean a little extra time, a little less time, but do try to stay with it. <sighs> Ebbing and flowing if you've yet to. Considering the various props like locks if you need to. <sighs> At least a few more big breaths here. <sighs> What can you choose to release? If you've put in the effort, the stira, find a little more ease, the sukha. <sighs> Take it slow, rolling or lengthening. Eventually we rise, no rush. Exhale to release. We're gonna unwind the legs, grab one of your blocks, maybe two if you like a lot of lift. Coming on to our back, restorative approach to inverting today. Unless you want to change it up, and always feel free to make it your own. Taking it in a way that is smart and safe, but also fun and enjoyable for you. Lifting our pelvis up, the block goes under the sacrum, right where your booty meets your low back. Do relax in each phase for at least a few breaths. Arms ground, palms ground some point we float the feet up but you don't necessarily have to for the inversion portion you would send the heels up in this variation knees are unlocked big toes could touch there's a nice counter to where we just were in double pigeon it's a lovely way to counter lots of sitting anything that you do in neutral alignment letting legs fall wide maybe letting arms fall wide little adjustment so you are stable and spacious using whatever area you have to make it work the practice can be so simple all the mat helps really all we need is our own body and a little bit of room so letting yoga be something to turn to even if it is seasonally if possible daily at least weekly regrounding Inviting in the new life force, prana. Releasing the old, anything that is not serving you. To take at least a few more of the deepest breaths so far. Feet 
feet, knees come back in. If you're still inverted in this gentle approach to shoulder stand. You can also take it to something like plow, soft plow. Or right back down to restorative bridge, restorative fish. And briefly demolating, restorative, easy. Soft plow, Karnatadasana. Head neutral. Breath flow. Stimulating thyroid, parathyroid glands, stretching all sorts of areas that may still be there. Too much too soon, backing off. Staying our own best teacher, our own observer. Said, yeah, yeah. When you climb down from the block, we'll take one more twist together. But again, feeling free to make it your own. Hug the knees. Maybe rock the head. Sigh. <sighs> right knee stays, left leg extends. Little scooch of your hips right, reach right. Easy twist left. Each exhale to help you cleanse and release anything not serving you. When you feel ready, come to center. Left knee in, pump the legs up on asana, side out. Left knee stays, right leg extends. Do adjust the hips a little left. Reaching out left, ease the knee right. Round to the shoulder, opening up the heart center. Let yourself melt a little further with time. Easing our way to neutral. Take the breath to shifting from here. We'll find our way slowly to Shavasana, the relaxation pose. Now it is also referenced as the corpse pose, practicing that full surrender, giving ourselves space, time to receive, to absorb, to really be present with what is. Give yourself a little time and space to adjust. Cover up if you need, warm up if you need. And I'll stay with you for a couple of minutes here in Shavasana, supporting what is a mindful meditation for many of us. And for others, it can be quite challenging. The breath count helps to apply. And you're here for roughly 10 cycles. One more inhale, all together through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. <sighs> Coming back to its natural rhythm. Maybe lick your lips, swallow. With the next exhale or two, flutter it out. 
feel the shifts you've made. Let it make an impression on you. Taking it with you, stretching yawn. And maybe join me in Sukhasana coming up to sit. Using your throne or just sitting tall. Adding any subtle rocks, ways that are helpful to reground. Even changing the crossing once, twice. Feeling your body align, feeling that flow from the base of you to the crown. Aligning those energy centers, those chakras, the joints, the muscles, everything feeling a little bit more range of motion, more mobility. Take the arms up. Bring the palms together, thumbs to the mind's eyes, a gesture toward clarity of thought. <sighs> to the lips, toward clarity of speech. And to your heart, toward clarity of action. Taking what we're learning from our practice into the things we are thinking, saying, and ultimately doing. I'm gonna close with the universal sound of healing, the Om. You're welcome to join me externally or internally. As you're ready, biggest breath available. Uh, oh. <sighs> Lift your heart. Gently bow your head. Thank you so much for practicing with me. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe.